Hello everybody and dear friends. Uh, today we are going to discuss another sector from the applied neuroanatomy, which is the anatomy of the regions. After we finish the anatomy of the cerebral vascular supply of the brain, we are going to talk about different regions of the brain and we start by the anatomy of the basal cisterns. Uh, I have been asked by many uh, students uh, and colleagues to talk about this anatomy and uh, I know that uh, many of you consider it is, uh, as a difficult subject, but actually, as you will see now, it's one of the easiest subjects in the neuroanatomy. And let's start now by discussing this very important topic, uh, anatomy of the basal cisterns. The basal cisterns, as you know, are subarachnoid spaces, wide subarachnoid spaces between the pia and the arachnoid, not in close proximity, forming pools. Pools filled with CSF, pools or cisterns. Cistern means pool, filled of flu with fluid, which is the CSF. And they are interconnected to each other for the CSF to flow from the lateral ventricles to the third to the fourth to the subarachnoid space, reaching the arachnoid villi in the superior cerebral sinus. And sometimes, the cisterns are separated from each other by arachnoid membranes. Mostly they are incomplete membranes. And as they are representing part of the subarachnoid space, so they contain the vessels and cranial nerves which are passing in the subarachnoid space. And they are divided into single midline cisterns and paired lateral cisterns on either side. So all the midline cisterns are single and the lateral are paired. This is a view to show you some of the most important cisterns. Here we can see the supracellular cistern under the chiasm. Here we can see the interpeduncular cistern. Here we can see a part of the liquid membrane. We'll discuss it in detail. The prepontine, the premedullary cistern, and posteriorly, see the quadrigeminal cistern, superior cerebellar cistern, and others. These are, so the, from this we see that the midline single cisterns are divided into anterior and posterior cisterns. And we are going to discuss the cisterns by the anatomy and the content from superior to inferior. So the anterior Cisterns start by the pericallosal cistern around the corpus callosum, then the lamina terminalis cistern <clears throat> in front of the lamina terminalis, which is extending from the upper surface of the posterior part of the chiasm to the rostrum of the corpus callosum. The cistern in front of it is called lamina terminalis cistern. <clears throat> and then the cistern under the chiasm, above the cella, is called the supracellular cistern. The part between the two optic nerves is called the chiasmatic cistern. Behind it and separated from it by the liquid membrane, there is the interpeduncular cistern in the interpeduncular fossa, then the pontine cistern, then the premedullary cistern. The posterior cisterns also are single cisterns, and we are going to discuss them from superior to inferior. The velum interpositum cistern in the roof of the third ventricle, and the quadrigeminal cistern behind the tectum, the superior cerebellar cistern above the cerebellum, and the cisterna magna under the cerebellum. So this is to show you the flow of the CSF from the lateral ventricle to the third, to the aqua, through the aqueduct, to the fourth ventricle, and through the foramen of Magindi, the midline, and Lushka laterally, to the subarachnoid space, Cyclone space uh, through the surface, through the, uh, the superior cerebellar, to the surface of the brain, to the arachnoid granulations, draining into the superior sagittal sinus, as you all know. Uh, single midline cisterns are divided into anterior and posterior. So the anterior from superior to inferior are the pericalosal cistern superior to the corpus callosum, 
It is around the corpus callosum called the pericallosum. And the lamina terminalis cistern is in front of the lamina terminalis in, the, in front of the anterior wall of the third ventricle. We'll see them in detail. Interpedunculus cistern is from above downwards. Interpedunculus cistern between the cerebral peduncles. And then the supracellular and the charismatic cistern anterior to the interpedunculus cistern surrounding the infundibulum and optic chiasm. And below the prepontine cistern anterior to the pons, below the premedullary cistern anterior to the medulla. Prepontine, premedullary. Easy. And these are again the anterior midline cisterns, pericallosa, lamina terminalis, chiasmatic and supracellular cistern, interpeduncular cistern, prepontine cistern, premedullary cistern. Again, pericallosa, lamina terminalis, supracellular, chiasmatic, interpeduncular, prepontine, premedullary. We're talking about the pericallosal cistern and the cistern of the lamina terminalis. Uh, the pericallosal cistern is the upward extension of the lamina terminalis cistern, which is the upward extension of the supracellular and chiasmatic cistern. <clears throat> so the pericallosal is the most superior than the lamina terminalis, than the supracellular and chiasmatic cisterns. Pericallosal cistern is around the corpus callosum, continuing posteriorly with the quadrilaminal cistern. And of course, if it is a pericallosal, it contains the branches of the anterior cerebral artery, which uh, form around, pass around the corpus callosum, and they are laying in the pericallosal cisterns. You know, the pericallosal callosal marginal branches of the anterior cerebral, the pericallosal is around the anterior, uh, around the surface of the corpus callosum, and it contains the anterior cerebral arteries. So here we have the pericallosal cistern. Cistern around the corpus callosum, continuous posteriorly with the quadrigeminal cistern containing the anterior cerebral arteries, continuous downwards with the lamina terminalis cistern and the chiasmatic cistern. The second most important cistern is the interpeduncular cistern, is present in the interpeduncular fossa and it is cone shaped. It lies between the cerebral peduncles and the membrane of Lilliquist, and we'll know what is the membrane of Lilliquist, and it is confluent area between the supra and infratentorial subarachnoid spaces. So uh, it is at the level of the tent. What is superior to it is supratentorial, what is inferior is infratentorial, and it is continuous below with the pontine cistern, and if you go laterally, it is continuous with the crural and ambient cistern and continuous superiorly with the supracellular cistern. We'll see everything. So the interpeduncular cistern is posterior to the supracellular cistern or the charismatic cistern and it is continuous downwards with the prepontine cistern and it is cone-shaped, present in the interpeduncular fossa, and here is a view of the interpeduncular cistern. Here is a view of the interpeduncular cistern, and of course, what does it contain? It contains the tip of the basilar artery and the two branches, terminal branches, posterior cerebral arteries, and the superior cerebellar arteries, and the interpeduncular veins, and the third nerve, you know the third nerve arises from the interpeduncular fossa medial to the cerebral peduncle. So the interpeduncular cistern 
is CSF cisturn present between the two cerebral peduncles of the midbrain, interpeduncular fossa, and it is continuous anteriorly and inferior with supracellular cistern and downwards with the prepontine cistern and it contains the basilar of the posterior cerebral, superior cerebellar artery, intrapeduncular vein and third nerve. So this is an anteroposterior view, anterior view showing the intrapeduncular cistern. Here is one cist one uh, cerebral peduncle and cerebral peduncle contains the third nerve, contains the tip of the basilar, contains the posterior cerebral artery with the perforators and contains the superior cerebellar arteries that are present all in the interpeduncular fossa and you can say that it contains posterior part of the circle of Willis. It's present in the interpeduncular system. If you go down, you will reach the prepontine cistern, and if you go up, you will reach the supracellular cistern and chiasmatic. The difference between the supracellular and chiasmatic, supracellular cistern is below the chiasm, above the cell. It contains the infundibulum, as you will see, and the part between the two optic nerves is called chiasmatic cistern. So the part, the cistern you see when you go in the subfrontal approach, you see the two optic nerves with arachnoid in between. This arachnoid is very well seen and it is either small or, or big depending on the chiasm, if it is prefixed or postfixed. But this arachnoid between, space between the two optic nerves is called the chiasmatic cistern and the CSF space below the chiasm above the pituitary gland is called the supracellular cistern. So this is the supracellular and this is the chiasmatic cistern, and they are continuous posteriorly with the interpeduncular cistern. So the supracellular and chiasmatic cistern, supracellular cisterns lie above supracellular, above the cell, above the pituitary fossa. As we said, continuous posteriorly with the interpeduncular cistern, and if it goes laterally, as we'll see, it continues with the sylvian cistern. And what does it contain? <coughs> The supracellular or chiasmatic cistern contains the anterior part of the circle of Willis. You remember the interpeduncular, posterior part of the circle of Willis. The chiasmatic contains the anterior part of the circle of Willis and the optic nerves and passes to the chiasm. And the chiasmatic cistern, as we said, is the part of the supracellular cistern anterior to the optic nerve between the two optic nerves anterior to the optic chiasm. So this is the supracellular system. This is the cell, this is the chiasm, the supracellular system here, anterior it is the chiasmatic system. Here is the supracellular system. It contains the optic chiasm and the pituitary infundibulum. The pituitary stroke going from the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland. This is to show you that the supracellular cistern below the chiasm and the chiasmatic cistern are separated from the interpeduncular cistern by a membrane, we'll discuss it later, called the liquid membrane. You should know that it has two components, from the dersum cell to the amenary body, and from the dorsum cellae to the pons. What we call, this is we call the diencephalic leaflet and the mesencephalic, mesencephalic leaflet. The diencephalic leaflet is separating the interpeduncular cistern from the supracellular cistern, which contains the infundibulum and the chiasm. The pontine cistern so we are going the midline anterior, not to lose your track. From above, we talked about pericalosa, lamina terminalis, supracellular chiasmatic, interpeduncular, and this is the pontine, prepontine cistern in front of the pons or the pontine cistern. And of course, it contains 
the basilar artery itself. Remember, the interpeduncle contains the tip of the basilar artery, but the prepontine contains the basilar artery, the ICA, and the anterior pontum is encephalic vein, and cranial nerves 5 and 6, because 5 arises from the midpons laterally, and 6 at the pontum medullary junction, and laterally. So this is what we call the prepontine cistern. This is the prepontine or pontine cistern simply. Again, very easy. This is the pond, and this is the pontine cistern. This is the interpeduncular cistern, as we said. This is an antro anterior view of the base of the brain. And you see here, I'm under the chiasm, so I can see the chiasmatic cistern. And you remember, it extends laterally to the sylvian cisterns. Actually, lateral to the chiasmatic cistern, the pale cisterns are the carotid cisterns and the sylvian. Midline, anterior, single cistern, chiasmatic. Extends laterally, becoming paired cisterns. The first one, when you go lateral to the chiasm, you know the carotid is there. So it is called the carotid cistern. If you go more lateral, lateral to the carotid, you reach the sylvian fissure, it's called the sylvian cistern. And after the chiasmatic cistern, we have, or the supracellular cistern, we have the interpeduncular cistern here, and we have the prepontine cistern here, and down we have the premedullary cistern. Again, and the medullary cistern we'll discuss now. It is premedullary, it is in front of the medulla, it is continuous posteriorly with the cisterna magna. What is present in front of the medulla? If you remember the anatomy of the vascular anatomy, you find the vertebral arteries piercing the dura, reaching the other vertebral artery at the pontomedullary junction. So we have the intracranial vertebra giving the pica, <clears throat> from which arise the anterior spinal artery and the posterior spinal arteries, the premedullary veins, and the 12th cranial nerve. You'll see it now. By this we mean the premedullary cistern, the cistern in front of the medulla. And this is the view if you reach in front of the medulla, the vertebral arteries, the pica arising from the vertebral arteries, the anterior pontomesencephalic veins, the hypoglossal nerve, and from this vertebral we have the anterior and posterior spinal arteries. So vertebral giving anterior posterior spinal arteries, giving the pica, <coughs> and the anterior pontomesencephalic vein, and the hypoglossal nerve on its way to the hypoglossal canal, as you remember in the occipital condyle. Uh, we're talking about the anterior midline basal cisterns, single basal cisterns. We talked about the liquid membrane. What is the liquid membrane? It is an arachnoid membrane separating, as we said, the chiasmatic cistern or the supracellular cistern from the interpeduncular cistern and <clears throat> from the prepontine cistern. So it has two leaflets. It is composed of two leaflets, the diencephalic leaflet and the mesencephalic leaflet. Diencephalic leaflet between the dorsum cell and the mammillary body, mesencephalic leaflet between the dorsum cell also and the pontomedullary junction. Diencephalic leaflet extends, as we said, dorsum cell and mammillary body, separating the chiasmatic cistern or the supracellular cistern from the interpeduncular. And the mesencephalic leaflet from the dorsum cilia also to the pontum mesencephalic junction, separating the interpeduncular cistern from the prepontine cistern. Uh, this one is the diencephalic leaflet, separating the supracellular cistern from the interpeduncular. Mesencephalic leaflet 
at the pontum at the, other, at the uh, junction between the pons and the midbrain, separating the interpeduncular from the prepontine. This is an MRI view, amazing view showing the infundibular stalk and liliquist membrane. This is the mesencephalic leaflet extending from the dorsum cell to the mammillary body and of course separating the interpeduncular cistern from the <coughs> supracellular cistern. <coughs> the other one is not apparent here. But if you go from inside the ventricle with the endoscope, and if some people from you saw a case of uh, endoscopic third ventriculostomy, uh, this is the dorsum cellae. This is the, if you go anterior to the mammillary body and you open, you find the dorsum cellae here and the liquid membrane, as we said, the mesencephalic leaflet extending from the dorsum cellae to the mammillary body. And behind it is the basilar artery. So you have to be very careful. If you have a high basilar artery, you should see it before opening the opening, not to injure the basilar artery in doing an ETV. <clears throat> Here, after we opened the liliquist membrane, and you can see the basilar tip, and the posterior cerebral apparent from the floor of the third ventricle. After you open the premammillary region, you will, you will see the liliquist membrane, the mesencephalic leaflet, then the, the diencephalic leaflet, then the mesencephalic leaflet here. Diencephalic leaflet is up, mesencephalic leaflet uh, is lower down. The liquid membrane has also a very important role in cases of craniopharyngioma. In most of the cases of craniopharyngiomas, extending supracellary, there is, uh, they don't invade, they don't adhere to the posterior cerebral circulation because the liquid membrane is preventing them and it is one <clears throat> of the easiest parts to dissect in most of the cases, not all the cases from the liliquist membrane is protecting the structure behind it from during dissection of the craniopharyngioma from the interpeduncular fossa. We talked about the midline single anterior basal cisterns. Now we're talking about the midline posterior single basal cisterns and as we talked above from above to below from superior to inferior we have the velum interpositum cistern in the roof of the third ventricle, if you remember the roof of the third ventricle, remember the two layers of the telacoroide, and we said there is a space between them, and we'll talk about it in detail, <coughs> which is called the cisterna villa interpositus, or villum interpositum cistern. Below it is the quadrigeminal cistern, behind the quadrigeminal plate, between the quadrigeminal plate and the splenium of the corpus callosum, and the superior cerebellar surface. So the boundaries of the quadrigeminal cistern, it is behind the quadrigeminal plate, bounded by the quadrigeminal plate anteriorly, by the splenium of the corpus callosum superiorly, superior cerebellar surface inferior. And lower down, you go to the superior cerebellar cistern, behind the quadrigeminal cistern, above the surface of the cerebellum, and the tent between the surface of the cerebellum and the tent, and the cisterna magna, which is the biggest of the all cisterns, cisterna magna, it is a magnum, it is a big cistern, is below the cerebellum, uh, behind the medulla, and it is the largest of the basal cisterns. <clears throat> so, villa interpositus, cisterna villa in the roof of the third ventricle, quadrigeminal cistern, behind the quadrigeminal plate, superior cerebellar cistern, behind the quadrigeminal, above the cerebellum, below the tent, and the cisterna magna, below the cerebellum, behind the medal. So these are the single cisterns, posterior cisterns,
from superior to inferior, the velum interpositor cistern in the roof of the third ventricle, quadrigeminal cistern between the quadrigeminal plate, anteriorly, the splenium of the corpus callosum, superiorly, and the superior surface of the cerebellum, uh, inferiorly or posteriorly. This is the quadrigeminal cistern, then the superior cerebellar cistern between the cerebellum and the tent, and the cisterna magna is below the cerebellum and behind the medulla. The velum interpositum cistern, as we said, present in the roof of the third ventricle or the floor of the body of the lateral ventricle, same thing, and it is present between the two layers of the telacoroide, superior and inferior layer, if you remember, they are layers of pia matter, and uh, one of them extends posterior to the spleen of the corpus callosum, superior, and the other one to the quadrigeminal plate of the uh, uh, quadrigeminal plate of the midbrain. So between the two layers, you have the telacoroide. You can see it in the anatomy of the third ventricle, and <clears throat> it contains the internal cerebral veins and the medial posterior choroidal arteries. So. This is the cisterna villi interpositus, continuous with the quadrigeminal cistern, supracerebellar, superior cerebellar cistern. This is upward view on the roof of the third ventricle, and you see the choroid plexus, you see the superior layer of telechoroide, and in this layer we have the internal cerebral veins formed by the thalamus and septa, and we have the medial posterior choroidal arteries present in the cisterna villi interpositus. Another view, this is the content, the internal cerebral veins and the medial posterior choroidal arteries between the two layers of the choroide in the cisterna villi interpositus. Again, Velum interpositum cistern. The quadrigeminal cistern, as we said, it is posterior to the quadrigeminal plate. It is inferior to the splenium of the corpus callosum, and it is superior to the cerebellum. So here, the quadrigeminal plate is here, the splenium of the corpus callosum is here, superior surface of the cerebellum is here, and this is a cyst of the quadrigeminal plate. Quadrigeminal cistern. It's an arachnoid cyst in the quadrigeminal cistern, and of course, it contains the vein of Galen and the precentral cerebellar vein on its way to the vein of Galen and the P3 of the posterior cerebral arteries on their way to the medial surface of the temporal and occipital lobes. So, quadrigeminal cistern, sometimes they call it the vein of Galen cistern. Boundaries and content. Content, vein of Galen, the precentral cerebellar vein draining into the vein of Galen from the superior surface of the cerebellum, if you remember, and the P3 of the posterior cerebral arch. Again, <clears throat> this is the quadrigeminal cistern. The perimesencephalic cistern, what is the perimesencephalic cistern? If we talk about this we know the intrapedancular cistern in the midline, and if you go laterally, you reach a cerebral space in front of the crust of the crust cerebri or the crural cistern. Then lateral to the midbrain, it's the ambient cistern. Then posteriorly, the quadrigeminal cistern. So a single anterior cistern intrapedancular. A single posterior cistern quadrigeminal. Two paired cisterns on either side. The crural cistern at in front of the crust cerebri or cerebral peduncle, and the ambient cistern lateral to the midbrain. It's called the peri mesencephalic peri midbrain cistern. <clears throat> now we talk about the superior cerebellar cistern, as we said, present on the superior surface of the cerebellum, behind the quadrigeminal cistern, 
and below the tent. And what does it contain? Contain the superior cerebellar arteries or the precentral cerebellar arteries we are talking about. Those from the superior surface of the cerebellum to the great cerebral vein of Gara. So they are present in the superior cerebellar cistern and in the quadrigeminal cistern. And it contains the distal branches of the superior cerebellar artery as you are on the superior surface of the cerebellum. Superior cerebellar cistern between the superior surface of the cerebellum and the tent. Another view of the superior cerebellar cistern. And then we talk about, last but not least, the cisterna magna. It is behind the medulla. It is below the cerebral hemispheres. It is continuous with the fourth ventricle with the foramen of Magendi. So below the cerebellum, behind the medulla, continuous with the fourth ventricle with the foramen of Magendi. And its lateral part contains the vertebral artery and the pica, remember, when they pierce the dura entering the intracranial part of the vertebral artery that passes in the lateral part of the cisterna magna before they reach the premedullary region. Again, another view, the cisterna magna, or the biggest cistern <clears throat> below the cerebellum, behind the medulla, continuous with the fourth ventricle by the foramen of Magindi. Cisterna magna MRI. And we talk about the paired cisterns now, as we said, present on either side. And they are also from superior to inferior as our plan. We have the sylvian cisterns, which is the deep part of the sylvian fissure, forming the sylvian cisterns. And we call our cisterns, we discussed between the cerebral peduncles and the anchors of the temporal lobe. And we said it is the lateral continuation of the interpeduncular, if you remember, the crural, then the ambient. We start by the interpeduncular, crural ambient, and we end with the quadrigeminal. So another paired group, crural cistern, between in front of the cerebral peduncles and lateral to it, between it and the medial temporal lobe, which is the anchors and it is the lateral continuation of the intrapeduncular cistern. Then the ambient cistern is the continuation of the crural cistern posterolateral to the midbrain, continuing to the quadrigeminal cistern, and another period cistern, a very important cistern, cerebellar pontine angle cistern. It is lateral to the pons and is the continuation of the prepontine cistern at the cerebellar pontine angle. And Last but not least, is the cerebellum medullary cistern lateral to the medulla, and it is continuation of the premedullary cistern. So again, from superior to inferior, sylvian cistern, continuation of the supracellar, the crural cistern, continuation of the interpeduncular cistern around the cerebral peduncles and the ambient cistern lateral to the midbrain, remember with the perimetrocephalic cisterns, then the cerebellum pontine angle lower level between the pons cerebellum and petrous bone, and the cerebellum medullary cistern lateral to the medulla, continuing with the premedullary cistern. Some of the pair cisterns <clears throat> we find here from the interpeduncular go laterally fine the sylvian cistern, right and left, paired cistern, then the choral cistern, then the ambient cistern here and here. A inferior view of the inferior surface of the brain, and you see there, <clears throat> as we said, this is the, the supracellular cistern, <coughs> above it is the lamina terminalis cistern, supracellular cistern, is continuous laterally with the carotid cistern and the sylvian cistern. 
and continuous posteriorly with the interpeduncular system. Again, chiasmatic system behind the interpeduncular, below is the prepontine, and the chiasmatic system continues laterally with the cistern around the carotid. It's called the carotid cistern. Continues laterally with the sylvian cistern. Sometimes a very small subarachnoid space around the oculomotor is called the oculomotor cistern. So the paired cisterns here are the carotid and the sylvian. Plus or minus the oculomotor if you want to mention. Again, the pyramid is cephalic. <coughs> Continuous with the core, as we said, in front of the cerebral peduncle, and the ambient cistern, ambient cistern, lateral to the midbrain, between the midbrain and the ancus of the temporal lobe, and continuous posteriorly with the quadrigeminal. And of course, the coral is the continuation, lateral continuation of the interpeduncular system. The sylvian system, it is sylvian, so what does it contain? The middle cerebral artery, the middle cerebral sylvian vein, the superficial and the deep, uh, front orbital veins and collaterals to the basal vein of Rosenthal, if you remember, the basal vein of Rosenthal, which is formed by the anterior cerebral and the middle cerebral veins, it is some collaterals. These are the contents of the, the main content, most important, is the middle cerebral artery and the middle cerebral veins. <clears throat> and you see uh, sometimes frontal orbital veins, collaterals from, to the vein of Rosenthal. This is the sylvian cistern. CSF is the sylvian fissure. And of course, the floor of the sylvian cistern is the insula. Again, charismatic, carotid, oculomotor, sylvian. The coral and ambient system, as we said, around the lateral midbrain and continuous anteriorly with the interpeduncular fossa and posteriorly with the quadrigeminal, the interpeduncular system and posteriorly with the quadrigeminal system. And what does it contain? What is passing around the midbrain? What is passing in the tentorial hiatus, the lateral incisural space, what they call, we'll discuss it with the anatomy of the tent. It is the posterior cerebral artery, yes, the superior cerebellar arteries, yes, the basal vein of Rosenthal, and the trochlear nerve. So these are the content of the lateral incisural space. This content pass in the crural and ambient system between the midbrain and the medial temporal lobe and the ancus, and these are the content. So here, interpeduncular, here is the coral, and here is the ambient system. Another view, interpeduncular, coral, ambient system, and the quadrigeminal. Cerebral angle system is a very famous system. You all know about it when you do surgery for the acoustic neuroma or microvascular decompression of the facial or the trigeminal. It is triangular in shape between the posterior petrous bone anterolaterally, the tent superiorly, the lateral pons medially, and the anterior cerebellum posteriorly. So the cerebral pontine angle is anterior to the cerebellum. It is medial to the petrous bone and it is inferior to the tent. So if you go in the cerebral pontine angle, you find the posterior petrous bone anterolaterally. You find the tent superiorly. You find the pons medially, and you find the cerebellum posteriorly. That's why you retract the cerebellum medially in order to reach the anterior cerebellum, to reach the space. And of course, you have the very famous contents, cerebral pontine angle, seventh and eighth cranial nerves, the fifth cranial nerve, the ICA, the flocculus of the cerebellum, and the foramen of Lushka. The flocculus is behind the foramen of Lushka, and the choroid plexus is popping out from the foramen of Lushka. 
if you remember. This is a view, anatomic view, showing the left cerebellopontine angle. And this is the seventh and eighth cranial nerves. And this is the petrous bone anterolaterally, the cerebellum posteriorly, we retracted it, the pons medially, the tent superiorly, and these are the lower cranial nerves. This is a view of the cerebellopontine angle. Here we have an arachnoid cyst in the cerebellopontine angle of the right side, and you see the nerves are passing in the cerebellopontine angle system. And last but not least, when we are talking about the cisterns, please don't forget there is one cistern. It's not a basal cistern, but it is a cistern uh, of the central nervous system. Is the subarachnoid space in the lower lumbar spinal canal distal to the corners. The cord ends at L1, below the level of L1. There is uh, the roots are passing in a very wide uh, space field with CSF. It's called the lumbar cistern, contains CSF, the coda equina, form of the lumbar and the sacrum nerve roots. So this is the end of the cord, and this is what we call the lumbar cistern. This is very important if you do a lumbar puncture, if you do spinal anesthesia, if you do anything, you get drainage from this lumbar cistern. Thank you very much, dear friends, for your attention. And as you realized, the topic of the basal cisterns is uh, quite uh, an interesting and uh, not difficult as many of you thought. And we hope we meet soon in another region of the central nervous system. And I think we are going to discuss next time the anatomy of the tentorial hiatus. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope to see you soon. Bye.